Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video, and today we're talking about the Slinger. The Slinger, as you're all no doubt very much aware, is our tool for firing various different ammo types, as well as our means to latch onto those wedge beetles and swing around like Spider-Man. You fire your flash bombs out of it, your screamers, dung bombs, different types of knives, and all random pellets, bombs or bullets that you find littered around the environment. In short, it's a very useful tool, and while it's a new addition in World, I now find myself wondering how I've ever lived without it. However, the reason behind this video is that I wanted to talk more about the slinger ammo you find in the wild. Things like red pits, water moss, scatter nuts, etc. On the surface, some of these ammo types have very obvious uses, but more often than not, there's another layer to them that you might not be aware of. So I thought I'd very quickly take a moment to go over what each of them do. So if you do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys knew about these, and if there's any other uses that you've discovered that perhaps I didn't mention, be sure to share those too. Now, first up, a couple of quick slinger principles. For those of you that have ever wondered, if you pick up an ammo type from the ground and you then go on to equip something from your bag, the ammo you gathered is saved, not overwritten. Once you unequip the item from your bag, the item you previously gathered will be loaded back in its place. Of course, if you pick something else up from the ground, it'll be swapped out, but when using items from your bag, you can also keep one set of gathered ammo too. Useful if you have things like bomb pods or dragon pods. On top of that, if you're in a pinned animation following select monster attacks, those ones where you're crawling backwards, you can actually use your slinger in this state. So if Anjanath is about to eat you, or Rathalos is about to turn you into burnt toast, you can equip a flash bomb and use it as a means to escape. Also, this is more than likely going to be important to note when Devil Joe gets added in the spring update, since in previous games, he had a pretty nasty pin attack, and you used to counter it by throwing dung bombs at him. So assuming he has a similar attack in world, you'll probably want to keep this in mind. Anyway, moving on to talk about the ammo types. Red pits and stones, these are your most basic and they really don't have any additional functionality besides what you might think. They deal minimal damage and are primarily used to knock down objects like rocks, seeds hanging from vines, fangs, any of those sort of environmental traps. You can also use them to shoot things like poison cups or vitality plants, again to trigger those. They can be shot on the ground where the monster hasn't seen you to draw its attention to that location. And also if you're in need of Vespoid, Hornita or other bug parts, using stones or red pits will allow you to kill them without destroying their bodies, in turn allowing you to carve them. They have a pretty generous ammo supply too, so while they don't have much use against the monster as they are, they're essentially your multi-purpose item used to shoot stuff that needs triggering. Also bombs, you can set off bombs with these too. Next up, torch pods. These have a few handy uses, most notably they can be used to clear the effluvium in the Rotten Vale, you fire it on the ground and it will clear a space around it. There is always a batch to collect right outside the base camp, so you can always have this at your disposal if you need to fight in this area. However, on top of that, it will also intimidate small monsters and it will cause them to not attack you unless a larger monster is there to accompany them. So an example of this would be the Jiros, they will avoid the flames unless Great Jiros is there to back them up. The flames in the torch pod will also attract nearby insects, so again if you want to hunt Vespoids or something like that, then firing one down will see them attracted towards it. Torch pods also do a little bit of tick damage, so if you fire them on the ground and the monster stands on it, then it will take damage. However, in addition to that, they have great value against Lavasioth. If you guys have fought this monster, you'll know that the lava on his body will harden, and you get to a point in the fight where you're bouncing off pretty much every part of his body. Well. If you fire torch pods on him, it'll heat the hardened lava, in turn allowing you to attack that area again, without bouncing. Next up, scatter nuts. These create more noise, so you can use them to lure monsters that are a little bit further away than normal, similar to the stones or the red pits, but with a much greater effective range. However, on top of that, they also deal KO damage if fired at a monster's head. So while it will likely take a while to get there, if you fire enough, you could just KO the monster, with your scatter nuts. Moving on from there to talk about the water moss. This is an ammo type that is often overlooked. It feels like you're just splashing water on the monster, but when fighting monsters like Baroth or Gelatados that have mud armor, then you can fire water moss at them to break it off. Similar principle to using a water type weapon against them, only this is something you can pick up on the fly. Also when fighting monsters like Toby Kadachi or Anjanath, they also have some interesting uses. You can essentially short out Toby's electricity if you shoot his tail, in turn stopping him from building up static and inflicting thunder blight. And for Anjanath, I'm pretty sure this is the case, but it seems you can shoot him in the mouth when he's all fiery to put it out or make him flinch. Now do correct me if I'm wrong, it could have just been a general flinch, but I've done this a number of times and it does seem like a possibility. If anything, it's probably more so that the water moss is especially effective against monsters that are weak to water, hence why it's good against Toby Kadachi, Anjanath, etc. But either way, this does seem to be a thing. For things like that, you do need to be a little bit more accurate, so you might want to try turning off auto-aim on your slinger. 
to give you a little bit more precision. Slinger Thorns are sticky bombs that explode with KO damage when stuck. They do some pretty good damage and are good for flinching the monster, but if you stick them to its head and then proceed to attack the head with your weapon, you can trigger the explosion and if the monster was close enough to the threshold, you could KO it in the process. Piercing Pods, well these are pretty self-explanatory, they pierce the monster, so best used or fired down the monster's body for maximum effect. Also great for flinching monsters and sometimes knocking them out of the sky, especially the final boss. The Slinger Bomb does good damage and that's essentially it. It's a bomb that explodes on impact, so you fire it to trigger a flinch and also damage the monster in the process. Bright Moss, this one is an interesting one, an ammo type that on the surface is seemingly useless. It just lights up dark caves. I mean, why would I care about that? Well, it also has another use. If you fire it in certain monsters' faces, it can be used to blind them, sort of like a flash bomb. It'll require a bit of precision, so it likely isn't something you'll do often, but on monsters like, say, Rathalos, if you shoot it in the face whilst it's flying, you can cause it to drop out of the sky in a similar way to if you'd used a flash bomb. Crystal Burst, commonly found in Elder's Recess, can be used to make monsters flinch. It's also an easily accessible item used to drop crystals on the monster's head in the middle area, but it can also deal KO damage if fired at the monster's head. And then finally, Dragon Pods, typically dropped by Elder Dragons during a fight. These cause the Elder Seal effect so they can delay an Elder Dragon's power-up, examples being Kushala's Wind Shield, Teostra's Fire Shield, Nogigante's Spikes, etc. Also, if fired at Nogigante's Black Spikes, you can break them with this pot. So it's useful if he's covered and you can't attack properly due to bouncing. Remember the some Slinger types, typically the more damaging ones like Dragon Pods, Slinger Bombs, Piercing Pods, etc. They drop from the monster at times when you make it topple. Keep your eyes peeled for any white objects on the floor with a red glow. These are the Slinger ammo types that they drop. Meanwhile, the other ones, the more common and less damaging items, those are gathered around from piles or plants in the world. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. Hopefully now, with a better understanding of all ammo types, you might get more use out of the broader selection available. But if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.